nobody's watching right hey good morning <laughs> welcome to the uh first coaching conversations we are here live you just caught uh elena and i having a little fun chatting about the the podcast before it even started uh welcome my name is dr christopher salute uh, we've got elena here elena is the director of hr of beyond mission capable solutions today we're talking about the power of networking elena i'm always the worst at and you know i know enough about you, you sent me your bio I'm the worst at introducing people. I'll remember that you're like a Sagittarius, but forget which company you work for. So would love, you know, feel free to introduce yourself to our audience. Yeah, I'm Elena. I have been in HR for about 15 years. I started as a recruiter and then branched out in all six areas of HR. I worked for nonprofits. I worked for startups. I worked for bigger corporations. So I've been everywhere a little bit. And uh, networking is what really got me jobs every single time. So Love that. one thing to highlight for sure. <laughs> I'm going to take a note of that. We're going to talk about that for sure. Um, so we're going to discuss, I think, a little bit of networking today, specifically networking in kind of the digital age, networking post, post-COVID, post which I think is really, really valuable. Um, Elena's uh, on the East Coast. She's out of uh, the Boston area. As you know, if you've watched our podcast before, I'm in the Las Vegas area, so I'm on the West Coast, so a little bit earlier for me here. Uh, if you're watching live, feel free to comment shout us out, uh, share with your friends. Most folks do not watch us live. You're probably watching this on a recording. So, hey, send us a message if this is something you're interested in. If you want to join us and you have a topic in mind, come on to Coaching Conversations. So, Elena, I think the first question that we're probably going to want to ask, and I think that 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 this pr- probably is not as black and white, in my opinion, as most people think. What does networking mean to you? Mm-hmm. I have a few networking workshops and a lot of the times when I ask the question to my students or anyone attending, they say, they always say it's an event. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, it's somebody's birthday. It's, it's somebody's conference. It's, it's a meeting that is scheduled and so forth. And I'm thinking, yes, that is in some way the definition of networking, but it is more so a lifestyle is how, is how you, how you leave a long lasting positive impression with anyone that you meet in your life at a bus stop in a classroom even here right anyone who joins maybe they have a comment that is noteworthy and so our attention we get their attention and so that's how we expand our network i love that you know funny story and and you'll find that i'm full of stupid funny stories so i'm I'm at a bachelor party in in nashville tennessee seven or eight months ago and um i'm I get there early because I just, the flights work out. So I'm working, I'm working in the lobby because I'm a workaholic and this guy next to me is kind of doing his own thing, working in the lobby. And we just strike up a conversation and he's, he's hiking all these trails all across the country. I say, wow, that's really cool. He says, yeah. And I, and I produce art and he shows me the art. Um, I wound up ordering a piece of art for him, for my partner, which actually never came. I think he refunded me, but, but still, <laughs> right. Or ordered the hours, paid, paid the money. And then he says to me, what do you do? And I said, well, I do these things and I tell him about my book. Right. And so he orders two or three copies of the book for his, for his kids. And so, I mean, here we are. And we, we went up getting each other's numbers. I mean, this is a bachelor party. This is food. This is drinking. This is God knows what else. And, and, and we're networking. So I do think you're right. I think that it really can happen and should happen anywhere. And, and also to note, right, always kind of have your guard up, right? Because you never know who you're going to meet, right? I've been in situations where I'm, you know, at the buffet somewhere at a networking event. And I, and I make a joke about the cheese, you know, not like a, not like a bad joke. And then the, the person next to me is like the CEO of the company. So thank God, you know, I, I, I made the right joke, right? So very true, you know, making sure that, um, that you know, you're, you're kind of always on your game. Um, so you mentioned one thing that I want to chat about. You mentioned that, um, you know, you've, you've networked your way into a lot of positions. I know you, you briefly chatted about your career. Is there anything else that you'd want to add about? Are there any notable, you know, organizations you've been with? That kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, this this current role, it started with the fact that I met someone and they talked about their recruiting practices and how they go about it. And I just felt that it could be done a little bit better. And so mm-hmm. always having the mindset of a giver, right? Always having the mindset of, is this person in front of me someone I could help or someone who will be useful to me? Well, my mindset yes. is always, what can I do for the person in front of me? And so because of that, I let my creative mind go. And I, I, I said, look, you can do this and you can do that. I offered, uh, I volunteered my services for, for a while, and then it became a paid opportunity. And so right. I can think back to so many other uh, other times when that's how I strengthened my relationship with Goodwill or the YMCA. Mm-hmm. And so uh, these are companies that I first, or just recently Northeastern, 
I am a guest speaker for them every Friday. So, but it started as a volunteering opportunity. I said, oh, I think your co-ops might just need what I have to say. Right. Uh, and so, so let me just come in and talk to them absolutely for free. And then they said, well, we, we need you to come here for more. So how about right. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, um, I love doing good first, you know, and, and something we talked about when we brought up this conversation. Right. And I hate to sound like a boomer, but I'm going to sound like a boomer for a second. Yeah. Right. I think I think that a lot of folks go into networking. And I think young folks go into networking with the with the mindset. How is this person going to help me? Number one. And then number two is what I hear all the time. Hey, we just met. Let's collaborate. Let's collab. Let's collab. Let's collab. Absolutely. Two things. <clears throat> yeah. Number one is do good first, right? Right. Volunteer your time first. Do good for other people. Not, not how can this person help me? How can I just do good in the world? It, if you don't believe in karma, you're crazy. It comes back to you a thousandfold, <laughs> right? But number two is collab, collab, collab. First of all, I'm going to do an extensive search on the work that you're doing before I collaborate with you. Okay. I'm going to do a search on who you are before I, I help you and I introduce you to someone, right? So well, I, I'm part of a, right? Yeah, sometimes- I'm part- the time mm-hmm. yeah um i'm part of a, a professional organization for example that you know is, is you know growing in size here in nevada and they're and they're going how can we get more members how can we get more members and i'm going just hold on a second <laughs> mm-hmm. don't don't do it like that right find the right people find the quality and you'll you'll kind of bring those folks in so i really love that the other thing that i love that you mentioned is networking your way into roles i don't think at this point in my life Perhaps maybe I've interviewed, like like applied and interviewed for maybe maybe one of my roles. Every other role that I've ever gotten has been, I worked for this person before. I worked with this person before. They were a client of mine. And so that's the other thing. You need to make sure that you're doing business in a quality and compelling way. Absolutely. And a lot of the times we separate from companies that are not good for us, right? In so many ways, they're not, they're, they're just not helping us grow or we, we, we hit some limits there. And when we separate, we just let it all out in our exit interview. Boom, boom, oh. boom. Right? We burn all the bridges. And yeah, but yeah. some of those opportunities that I, I had were from the past. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I, I really hope that they don't know how I felt when I actually left. Because- <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, well, the, the other part of that is, too, you, you may have beef with the organization. But you may not have beef with that person, right? And so bad mouthing that organization might they might take it personally. The other way around, you may not like a manager, but the organization itself is fine. So should other colleagues go somewhere else, you might you might appreciate that person, right? We, this world is very, very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> very small, very complex and very small. So um Elena, I know we talked about this this earlier and we talked about it a little bit here. What do you where's the best place to network? Where do you think? It's it, it's really everywhere, right? You wake up in the morning and you go to to get your cup of coffee, your cup of tea from I won't name the names <laughs> of the places, but but then then you you are with somebody in in line. And what happens to us often is that, you know, we live in a world of instant gratification. You you mm. you you have a question, you go to Google. Under thirty seconds, you get your answer. You you want a package delivered. You know the service. You go to it. You get it in under two minutes. You have, you know, you need a ride. Here's your ride sharing app and you get it. So when we meet a new person, we have this instant gratification kicking in when we're thinking, if I'm talking to you for more than two minutes and you are in, are not interesting, and if mm-hmm. you are boring and more so if we do a little bit of thin slicing, I don't know if you read Malcolm Gladwell. Oh, yeah. Uh, Link, right? So he does this thin slicing and I'm thinking, uh, I think, I don't know what your profession is, but I'm assuming your profession is something I don't like. I don't know <laughs> if you're a Republican or Democrat, but I'll assume that you are that. So you, our brain does this thin slicing really, really quick. And then in under two minutes, we decide, no, this person is just not worth adding to my network because we right, do right. the thin slicing. We do our little analysis, which is 99% wrong. I have this exercise in my networking workshops when I actually have friends. I have my friend Nick and my friend Courtney. They know poor them, but I have my class thin slice them all the time. And based on what they wear and some questions they answer, they get to, oh. you know, guess their profession. Are they Republican? Are they Democrat? Are they married? And they get it wrong every single time. And I'm thinking, listen, the one rule in networking, do not believe everything that you think. Mm, mm, I love that. Don't believe everything you think. Now, I, I think in front of you. it might be just it might just be anyone. And let's say the person in front of you is not the most interesting or cultivated or, or just adding immediate value to your life. But behind right. them, there's other people. Right. We're not, you're not just a face. You're not just Chris. You are Chris with a huge network. 
Right. That very true. Very true. Very. Now, now I want to I want to bring up something though. There is something to be said about a gut gut reaction though, right? Your your gut does does tell you intuitive things. Do we not agree with that or? I do. And if you read Blink, then you know that ninety nine percent of the time we are wrong. And so. I think that I have a natural curiosity about people. I, I Before coming to the United States, I worked as a journalist for 10 years. So I was forced oh. a little bit into having to bring the story back. So if I meet a new person, I'm thinking, oh, God, you're just so boring. I don't know what to do with you. I had to force <laughs> myself to dig deeper and deeper and deeper until yes. I have a target that I can come back and bring. So I think I've carried that mentality with me through my recruiting work and my HR and my networking. I stay with a person and I become their therapist, right? I ask them questions, I make them feel comfortable. And there's everybody has a story. There's no person who is who is boring unless you don't ask the right questions about them. Right, right. It's funny. We mentioned and we talked about this before the podcast. I own a media brand as well. And very mm -hmm. often people will contact me, whether it's my podcast or my magazine, and say, I want you to write an article about me or I want to come on your podcast. And I'll say, what do you do? And they'll say, well, I'm a model. First of all, no, you're not. Second of all, um, what else do you do? Because we can't talk about how pretty you are on a podcast for two hours, right? So, you know, you do, you have to dig and find, and everyone's got something. We talked a little bit about, um, we'll, we'll bring it up later, passing the lunch test, right? Um, I just joined a Dungeons and Dragons group. I've never done this before in my life. And these are some of the coolest people you'll ever meet. Now, I'll bet you, because it's a nerdy kind of activity during an interview or a networking event, they would be shy to tell you that, but it's very cool. Right. So mm -hmm. so I, I totally agree with that. Now, one one question that, that I love, I think you brought this question up because mm -hmm. this is so important. I'm an extrovert extrovert. I think you are, too. I can talk all day. My, my partner thinks I'm crazy. I talk. I could talk 25 hours a day. Um, <laughs> and something that saddens me is when you have a dormant relationship. A mm -hmm. somebody professionally that you really looked up to, you worked with, it just it fell away. You didn't have a falling out. Right. How mm -hmm. do you revive that? How do you breathe life into that? Yeah, <clears throat> we just expect, right? Every time we have a text message from someone, we, if we can preview the whole message. If we see a name that we haven't heard from in a couple of months, we just know it's going to be an ask. It will be a right. request. It will be, hi, how are you? And the next paragraph will be, hey, Chris, can you help me with? Elena, can you right. help me? With? Most of the time, look at my resume, help me with my job search and things like that. Sure. What What is really pleasant is, is when I get a message from someone that says, hi, Elena, how are you? I saw that you are practicing or you're training for a marathon. How is that going? God, yes. And I go, oh, wow, somebody's following me. Somebody cares. Somebody. And of course, and I'll want to share. So even your dormant ties, you do remember something about. Right. So right. If, if somebody comes to your mind in any capacity, like, oh, I know that this person is studying for an exam and I know somebody else passed the exam. And I would say then I, immediately as that thought comes to me, I will not let you become a dormant tie. I will. I'll text message you, Chris, and I'll say, hey, Chris, I know you're taking this difficult exam. My friend just passed it. Would you like me to introduce the two of you? And so, look, I'm giving nothing. I'm really right. giving nothing. I'm giving 30, 30 seconds of writing a text. But I come across as a giver because I have your goals in mind versus having my needs in mind. Yeah. And so if every time you reach, hold back a little bit and think, okay, what can I say? Maybe invite them to lunch is also a form of giving. But the one mistake mm -hmm. that we make always is that we always think about a person that we haven't been in touch for a long time when we need something. And then that's how we lead with that request. And we become takers and come across as takers. And so the person on the other end says, sure, I'll help you. But it doesn't strengthen the relationship really. No. And it might be the last time they answer that message, right? <laughs> yes. Well, it's, it's, I, had a ment I had a mentor, still have a mentor. He, he's a great guy. And, and one thing he says to me, he, he coaches on communication. One thing he says to me is during every conversation, communication, whatever you're going to have with someone, it, during that conversation, you're you're either going to take more or you're going to give more. And it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you can't take sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. So long as it's evening out. So Some conversations you might be giving more. Sometimes you might be taking more. It could be, oh, gosh, I had a, a falling out with my spouse or I lost my job or today's a really crazy day. You just need an ear or I need you to look at my resume. But the next time could be, hey, when was the last time you and your kids came over for dinner, right? Um, and I, I think that we, we miss that that giving. Very often, in fact, funny, in, in, I was thinking about the you this morning because I spent the weekend just messaging some of my prospects and clients mm -hmm. just to say hello. No yeah. ask. No, nothing. Just, hey, uh, you know, I have one, one of one of my prospects is very spiritual, as am I. Hey, just just included you in my prayer today. I wanted to let you know that uh, I had one of my clients who is very ill. Hey, no ask at all. Are you good? Are you out of bed? Those types of things. And, yeah. and you know, someone might say that, oh, well, you know, you're benefiting in the end. 
I would say you're actually benefiting right then and there because you're giving some good stuff out. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. I agree. And especially I think if we're talking about this digital area, it's even easier to see what people are doing. And more and more people are honest about their, the challenges in their life too. And then reach out with like a supportive message to them on LinkedIn or, or on, on any, any platform. Yes. I find that people's honesty is really helpful to us because in the past we didn't know if a friend was going through a difficult time. Right. Right. But now we know. So it's a gift yeah. for us. And, and I think to your, to that point, if, if you're watching and you're wondering how to network, don't just read the news on LinkedIn and let it end there. Because the reality is, and we know this, right? You're mm -hmm. showing typically your best self on LinkedIn or Facebook, even if you're having a rough day. So reach out to somebody. Hey, notice, you're in the, notice you just started a new job, wanted to congratulate you. And and you, I may say that to you, Elaine, and you may say, even though this is not the case, you may mm -hmm. say, yeah, I just started a new job, but it's only part-time. It's not really what I'm looking for. I'm still, I'm still looking. Great. Now I just uncovered some information that should I find something to help you, I, I can do that, right? So I think so often we look at what's on social media and we say, oh, I know what that person's all about. There's so much more that we can learn by having that conversation. And also we can express, I think, look, I am one of those people, right? If I'm going through a rough time, I will not really jump on social media and talk about right. it. Right. And I have friends who are like that too. They, they will only post the positive, positive and things like that. And so at the same time, you can read through it. You can read between the lines. I sure. I worked for Amazon and I got caught in the in the layoffs. Oh, was I happy? Was so no, I was I was very very uh, I was very sad. And, and the day that I was the saddest was the day that I posted, and I actually talked about, hey, I have all the time in the world right now since I don't have a job. Do you need free coaching? Right. Right. That was that was my therapy. I said, okay, I cannot be a taker and just message all of my friends. Do you have a job for me? I can be a giver and say, I have all this time in the world to help you. And I was overwhelmed. I gave my calendly away, which was a little bit of a mistake. Well, bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it helped though. Because I thought I'll have, you know, one or two. And little did I know. And with Calendly, you don't really not everyone provides contacts. And I was thinking, okay, who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> on LinkedIn okay so they do this and that they haven't opened to work okay so they're looking for a job and I would do this all this homework of, in, uh, of before my call with them they definitely kept me busy <clears throat> but of course I had calls with people that said so are you looking for a job and I said yes but I think right now I'll focus a little bit more on, on just giving my free time yeah I love that good for you um you know it, it's funny I, I I people think I'm crazy I, once every four or five months I'll do the same thing where I just say hey no catch sign up. I'll give you a month of free coaching. And people go, yeah, but you're going to, no, I'm not. If you don't want to continue, that's great. I need the practice on new people. And, <laughs> it, you know, I want, and I want you to also tell people that I'm great. You know what I mean? So I totally get that. Um, mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about, funny that you mentioned this, this was your question. What do you, what do you do when your company pays for a conference? Um, I had a good friend of mine on Friday night. He's just getting his career started. I, I told you about him actually. And he said to me, Christopher, what do you think about conferences? What's the best way to, to navigate a conference? And I thought to myself, what a great question to ask. This, this guy is really thinking with integrity and he's thinking mm -hmm. really strategically about his time. So what do you, what would you do? You want to network at a conference, you want to make sure that you're getting your company's money's worth. What, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and it's such a gift. And sometimes we just think of it as vacation, or at least me in the past, I thought, oh, this is great. My company's paying for my flight, for my mm -hmm. hotel, for my meals. All I get to do is be a spectator. I look at the agenda. I decide what what session to attend. I go. I, I listen to half of it. Half of it, I'm probably in my phone. And then it's ending, and I go to the next thing right. on the schedule. And so, so and somebody asked me, he is they said if you were to be at a bowling alley are you the pins or are you the bowl at a conference and i said i don't know what that means and he said well, the, the, the pins are the the ones who are waiting for things to happen and the bowls are making things happen and i said well this this conference is already established what what can i add to it and they said two things they said you can have your mini conference within the conference so you have the attendee list you know who else is going message everyone that you're having breakfast at 10 o'clock across the street and I said, what if everyone shows up? He said, you're not that popular. Nobody's, not everyone is going to show up. <laughs> but one or two might. Two people will show up. You'll have one to your right and one to your left. And here you're, you're networking at a brunch that you have organized. And I said, that. and that can happen. And that's what I did. 
And then uh, there was another one where we, I said, okay, I'm going to have dinner at this place. I, I can only have five people at a table. And I blasted. And I think I had five people. And we had a blast just talking to new people at a conference. Yeah. Another thing that people do at conferences is they, if you want to stand out in, in some way, make sure you do ask a question at a conference. Oh, yeah. Every speaker at the end of the of their engagement, they will say, does anyone have a question? I can tell everyone is thinking, oh, I wish I had a really good question. Right. You can think about that really, really good question as their engagement progresses. Absolutely. And the moment they ask, you stand up and you say, hi, my name is Chris. And this is my parenthesis. Very good question. And I guarantee you somebody will come to you and will say, Chris, that was a really good question. And that's it. They come to you. You don't even have to come to them. Love but you that. Speak, everybody notice who you are. Everybody notice you're smart. And it helps the speaker too, right? Because oh, of course. they benefit from a good question. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of a win, win No, I do love that. And I think, you know, we, w- one of my pieces of advice to this person was don't necessarily pick the topics that, that interest you. Look at the speakers, right? There could be speakers who are speaking on something that may be a little bit boring to you, but that particular speaker may have some value to you when you look them up, right? Listen, they may that that topic may look boring, but they may be super engaging. Go check it out. Make sure you, you handshake them at the end of the conference, right? Um, and I think you know, you and I probably started very when I started going to conferences. Mm-hmm. I thought to myself, I can read these papers. It's fine. <laughs> I, I would I would go out late and not party, but make sure I went to every single happy hour, every networking event, every one of those things. And that's how I started to build my network. I was 20 something years old. And but there is a good there is a good balance because somebody might ask you. Right. They might say, Elena, oh, I'm so glad to meet you. What did you think of my my presentation today? And you go, oh, I didn't see it. Right. So, so you do want to engage in the conference as well. Yeah. Keep notes on people. I know this is this sounds creepy and a little bit intrusive, but keep notes. I have notes, 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 notes. I, I talk to a person. Always. I have to remember five things about them. I have to remember their name, the, the correct spelling of it. I have mm. to remember where they work and their role. I have mm-hmm. to remember something special about them. They said they're training for a marathon. They, they said they're, they're studying for an exam, something special. And the fifth thing, I have to remember where we met. And so mm-hmm. when I'll follow up in two weeks after meeting that person, I'll say, hi, Chris, I met you at this conference. I'll think of some something special Chris mentioned. So I would say, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I've been reading your book that you shared with me and I really love it. And then the and then end with something like, hey, do you want to come and present your book to a group of girlfriends that I have, right? right. So here I come across as somebody who remembers you, who, who remembers something special about you and comes across as a giver and not a taker. Yeah. And I, and I think too, you know, because, and that's, you know, that's why CRM systems exist, right? Because we're taking notes on folks. But I think anyone you speak to who's an extrovert would say that. And it does, you're, you're right. It, it does seem creepy if, if you're not, if that's not something that you engage in, but as long as you have good intentions, right? You're not you're not using someone's uh, so- kid soccer team to get the sale. You're simply wanting to make a connection, and I think that's the major difference between networking and selling. A good mentor of mine said to me, "Networking is not meeting someone and asking for a favor. It's meeting someone, and by the time you need something from them or want something from them, it's like asking a close friend, right? You wait." You get to know that person. You also get to know who their network is and, and what they can do for you and what you can do for them, right? So that you're not shooting darts at the wrong board, right? So, yeah. you know, if, if I wanted to, let's say, um, find an organization in Indianapolis to to send my, my graduates to, and you may have connections in Indianapolis, let's pretend you don't, right? You're in the Boston area. I'm not going to ask you right away unless you've expressed that you've got those contacts there. It's going to make me seem desperate. It's going to make me seem like I don't pay attention, right? So make sure you you are asking the right people for that ask. Yeah, and a lot of the times it's, it's more than asking. You just some, you just some you can share some of your goals and some of your aspirations. Right. And, and a giver, right, will, will say, "Oh, Chris, I can introduce you to the right person," and. A lot of the times we have we have a lot of friends on social media, but we don't know one important thing about them. Where do they work? Yeah, their right. TikTok is great. <laughs> yeah, right. their Instagram is beautiful. Where do they work? Because if we know where somebody works, we can we can give to them by mm-hmm. asking them to share our resume with their HR, but knowing that they will get a referral bonus out of it. So it's right. so it is a give and take in, in that situation. But a lot of the times I, I, I 
somebody said, oh, I really don't have a professional network. But yes, you do. How many friends do you have on Facebook? 300. Okay, find out where you work. That's your professional right. network. Right. Just that simple, you know? And, yeah. you know, I think, I think we, you know, I'm sure you've been pitched on one of these before. I get one at least once a month, these multi-level marketing shakes and stuff like that, right? <laughs> and they're always, hey, girl, want to let you know about my juice or whatever, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. So we hate that. But the one thing I do like is they're engaging with their network, right? So they're messaging folks, finding out a little bit about them, right? There's nothing wrong. I try to do that at least. I, so every week I message five people on LinkedIn and two people on Facebook that I don't that I don't talk to. And I just say, hey, no agenda. Just wanted to get to know who you are. Wanted to let you know what I, what's going on here. And I've actually made some really close friends and some really great contacts. So oh, I, I think it's super important. On that note, Elena, here's my question to you. Mm. How long does it take, in your opinion, to, to make a solid professional relationship? Under one minute, really. Under one minute. Okay, tell me about that, because that's not what I would have guessed. <laughs> I would say as... <clears throat> When you when you when you talk to someone, you have to make sure you find more about them than they find out about you, right? So so yeah. there you can spend one minute or five minutes asking questions about them. There's only five things they need to know about you: your name, your profession, the fact that you're nice, the fact that you're nice, and the fact that you're nice. <laughs> gotcha. And rule then of the five. rest of the time, rule of five. And then the rest of the time is spent with them, and so uh, talking about them. And if you are a good journalist less therapist whatever hat you want to put on sure. you'll get to a moment where where there's some need for for connection or there's some need to do something together or mm -hmm. they'll say oh but can you help me with this but can, oh this do you have a good idea about some of my goals or some of my plans so that's it once you get that click in which you have in I say like a date is a networking event that's right. how i look <laughs> an interview Absolutely. is a networking event right Absolutely. and so but sometimes we think oh i'm going on this date so we didn't connect romantically therefore we will ghost each other well wait no and i can give an example of how i made 10k out of a date but long story okay. <laughs> <In another time. laughs> uh, but uh, but sometimes you know we somebody in i interview a candidate right and the moment we decide that my salary range or the company salary range is smaller than their desired uh, compensation, there's all of a sudden a disconnect, right? They say, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'm, this is not going to work for me. Goodbye. And they hang up and I'm thinking, what? You worked for 10 hours on your resume. I'm pretty sure you're, right. you're, you're all, everybody and you, your neighbors, everybody looked at your resume. You applied for this role. You waited for me to call you. You finally prepped for this interview. I'm here. Yeah. Right, <laughs> right, right, right want to network anymore so <clears throat> i think the mistake that we're doing it can happen in under five minutes it's just that we have to be open if a door open closes okay we don't align on salary okay we don't align on our romantic goals that's okay that's not the end of our relationship yeah there's more to us <laughs> it's interesting you say that so 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 often um i will get you know i i get calls all the time right head hunted by, by various companies and sometimes this sometimes the salaries are super low sometimes the position's not right it may be it may be something that I dabble in, but it's not my thing. I will gladly be on the phone with that person for as long as they want to be on the phone because I've had it happen where I say, you know, what? and I'll be honest, you know what, this is not the level of, let's say, data analytics that I'm that I can do, right? I typically manage those folks, or I'm kind of a little past my implementer phase, I'm, I'm more I'm more my strategist phase where I'm managing teams. So I hope that's okay with you. They'll remember that. And they'll, they'll call you for a job you haven't applied to again. So I think that's really important. And the funny thing about dating, I found out in, La in Las Vegas, so many people use their dating network for <laughs> jobs because Las Vegas is this like hustle bustle kind of, you know, sin city town. Um, so, so many times I, when I was dating, I'm, I'm no longer single, but people would, would message me and we go on a date and they go, oh, I'm so glad you have a job. And I go, what? And they go, well, because people use this to network for a job. And I go, well, maybe next time. Hear them out, you know, what's the worst, especially if they're buying you dinner, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, about 10 <clears throat> years ago when I was a junior technical recruiter and still learning about technical terms and things like that, yeah. I went on a date with somebody who told me they are a QA analyst and I had no idea what QA was. And sure. so we spent three hours of the date talking about testing because, you know, I had my, my journalist hat on and I was, you know, I, I thought this should be his time and he was very excited to talk about the his job and of course i asked more and more questions i was bored out of my mind after three hours i was interested in baseball it was playing in the background if i'm, if I'm looking at baseball it means that you're really not catching my attention but at the end of the day he said elena do you think we can go on a second date and i said yeah sure i, I think we can make that happen 
And I said, I'm curious just why, because I'm thinking you just talked about yourself the whole time. And he says, well, I'd like to know more about you. And so this is the goal with every connection, right? If they remain hungry at the end of the, the interaction with you, if they want more of you, that's that's key. It didn't work out with us romantically. It just wasn't wasn't meant to be. Sure. But then I worked at a staffing agency and, you know, staffing, they there's not a lot of training going on. Nope. And they said, we're looking for a test engineer. And I said, I have no clue what they do, but I think I know the person. Right, right. And I called, I said, do you remember me? He said, of course, we had a best, you know, one date. I said, yeah, we absolutely had an amazing uh, one date, but I have a company that would be interested in you. I had no idea, Chris, what they needed and what he does. I just knew that there was a connection there. Yep. And my placement fee was 10K and I earned 10K. That was the 10K. <laughs> I was like, that's the best 10K it. ever made. Absolutely. And probably a good meal, too. So I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, and I think I think that that we, we don't treat our connections the way that we should in that way. Right. So so often we are nervous to call someone, you know, we're, we're out here. This is this is our this is our livelihood. Right. Like you, we work all day so that we can enjoy our time. So if someone if you can help someone get by or someone can help you, that that's the name of the game. So speaking of meals, um, we talked about this, and I want to explain what the lunch test is because because I want to make sure that our, our viewers get it. We talk about the lunch test a lot in the book. We talk about it a lot also with our with our graduates. I am a huge on making sure that our graduates pass the lunch test. Passing the lunch test means that during an interview, kind of like your date, right? Always wanting more, always want you know hungry. And I, I do I compare it to dating. When you're done with an interview, you should want that interviewer to invite you to lunch. They, they should want to invite you to lunch. Now, they probably won't because that's inappropriate on a first interview. But you want to be interesting enough where they go, oh, it's lunchtime. Shoot, I wish Atlanta could come with me. So uh, so how, in your opinion, would we get that interviewer or that network person to think that we're an interesting person? You, you said one thing, which I love, which is listen, listen, listen. What else? Yeah, I think oh, sometimes when we realize that we have in front of us a decision maker or somebody who is who has an important job, who, who can open doors for us, we automatically get into this boasting mode. And we, especially mm. in the interview, and we say, okay, so I got a master's in computer science. I learned Python independently. I did all these things. And so it's okay to push your agenda a little bit, but for them to invite you to lunch, most importantly is that they like you at a human level. So you can say, I got my master's in computer science and here's how you balance it out. I am so grateful that my company paid for it. Right. Right. I'm humble. Right. Exactly. Or I learned Python by myself, but was it by yourself? Or I'm, have you heard of code Academy It's free and it's amazing. Or, you know, right. Udemy or other, we're not advertising here, but it's just, right, right, know, right. whatever. Platform. And so that's that's how you get invited to lunch you you know there's a company that i really like it's called easy caters and they have at the end of their job description they have the eoc blurb where they say they don't discriminate against anyone you know based on sexual uh, religious da -da -da -da. and at the very bottom they say but we don't employ jerks even brilliant ones love that yeah and 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 that's how they 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 make sure that they have high quality technical people on their team but also who are nice to go to lunch with love that absolutely love that you know Maybe um five dysfunctions of a team christy right the first two weeks of her being ceo she fired the top performer because he yep. was a jerk <laughs> right you know you're better off having 10 players on the team that are b pluses than one mm -hmm. a plus that won't work with the rest of them so i, I completely agree yeah. with that and 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 it's interesting you discuss humility because that was something it, it took me a long time to kind of figure out when i when i first started teaching and becoming a dean for example I would boast about all my accomplishments because I was young and I was insecure and I needed my students to know that I had done some stuff. And what I found was that the reviews came pouring in and I was ostracizing myself. Then I met a man who, if you were to look at my accomplishments and his, it's like not even a question. This guy is one of the most accomplished people in the world and intelligent. You could, can't even, you could tell right away. What he would do, so one, one example was he graduated college at 17 and then got his a bunch of other degrees by the age of 24. Now, that's really um, intimidating. So the way he said that he did it was he got all these degrees. And while he was student teaching at his university, he was student teaching folks that could go have a beer and he couldn't even join them for a beer. And so he kind of makes it like, here I am and I'm this smart guy, but I didn't get the fun college experience that you probably get, right? Uh, and so when you hear that, you realize that he's a human being and really he he probably would have traded one of those degrees in to be able to have a beer with some of his with some of his friends, right? Yeah. 
Um, and so I think it's really important that we do that. You know, people, uh, there's a phrase that one of my best friends says, she says, a lion doesn't walk into a room and say they're a lion. You know, okay. they're a lion, right? Okay. Instead, they walk into a room and they, and they see how you, how they can help you. And I think that's really important. Um, mm -hmm. we have, we have two more questions. I want to make sure that we get through them before. And, and you know, I, I'm sure we've got some folks here with some with some neuro, neuro spice and neurodivergence who are probably getting bored already with us, even though we're so engaging. Um, <laughs> so so if, you, if you can't pass the lunch test, right, um, you know, let's say you don't have a group of people that 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 you're going to network. How do you kind of create that? Like, what are some things that you do to kind of create your own networking vibe with, with, within your hobbies and, and interests? Yeah, well. Lucky I do some puffs. So I have some hobbies in which I created a group. I'm a ballroom dancer. I'm a runner. I do yoga and things like that. So, <clears throat> but let's say that I am not physically apt and just have my job and that's it. And there's not no ability or let's say, no, we, we all have abilities. Let's say I don't have a, the confidence to come forward and, and, and build a group. One thing that you can do is you can create a group by inviting speakers that are your friends. So for instance, I have a group that is called Good Talk. It oh, started with everyone who identifies as female, maybe we'll expand to, to, to other uh -huh. genders, but it started with five girls. And so last week we had somebody who works in, uh, in real estate. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about real estate. Well, I know about real estate, but not what it's like to be an agent. So right. we had her do a TED Talk for 15 minutes in which she got in front of us. We, we had pizza and tea, which was pretty ridiculous. But she just told us about the challenges of being in real estate and the highlights and the things that you'll just never learn anywhere. And before that, we had a math teacher. Now, am I good at math teaching wise? Am I good at real estate? No, but I, <laughs> I could invite somebody else to just be there. And I didn't do anything. My job was coordination. Can yeah. you go at this location at this time? Can you pick up the pizza? That's it. So sometimes we can we can invite a friend to talk to another friend, and that's how you create your group. Even though you don't have the right not the right skill set, the the skill set that you think would give you enough you confidence. You exactly, because we all do. It's just that sometimes you know imposter syndrome and all that kicks in. Yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And I think we already answered this question. When is it appropriate to introduce contacts? And the answer is whenever you feel like it. Every time, you know, if you have a mindset of a giver, it will just come to you. Every time I talk to someone who is going through a rough you know, moment or needs some support that I cannot provide because I don't have the professional skills, somebody else always comes to mind. And I'm thinking, oh, I, I just don't know how to write a book, but Chris just did. Right, <laughs> so right. how about that? Then, you know, and then to your point, it, it's, it's giving something to you, too, because you teaching somebody how to do something. Oh, people love to talk about themselves and what they do, of course. Yeah, and so you might have a conversation an hour and only 10, 10 minutes is something that is a nugget that you truly you know transfer. Uh, but but it's a gift, right? The, so anytime, the bigger you, it's just ex exponentially grows as you start introducing people to each other. And then yeah. it's great. We have to, you, if you want to go out, your friends already know each other. How cool is that? I love that. Yeah, really. Because that's always the awkward part. You're introducing, are they going to like each other? It's like when you say that your favorite song's on the radio and somebody's like, I don't like it yet, you know? Um <laughs> So I totally get that. Well, I want to thank you so much, Elena, for, for coming in and, and joining us today. And, you know, to close things out, is there are there any questions that you would wish, wish I had asked that you might have wanted to answer? Any closing thoughts about networking, specifically networking in 2023 post-COVID in the digital age? In summary, it's a lifestyle networking, right? Yeah. Looking, at, looking at the next person that you meet, not making assumptions about them being a journalist and learning about them just remembering that everybody has a story mm -hmm. and digging and digging and digging and then always leading with 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 giving versus taking is probably i good. love that so <laughs> i wrote that down mindset of a giver and i've been looking i usually um i usually put something on my mirror in the morning for a couple of years um my my post it said you prayed for this now do it right but i think <laughs> honestly i'm going to just write the word give i'm going to write be a giver or give on my mirror and that's going to be uh, what, I, what what my mantra is going forward. Really, really enjoyed our conversation today, Elena. Now, Elena is uh, the Director of Human Resources of Beyond Mission Capable Solutions. Uh, we are here at Cogent. Uh, this is called Coaching Conversations. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Salute. I want to thank you so much, Elena, for coming on to our show. I want to thank uh, Kartike for making sure everything, you know, running the ones and twos but beneath the surface, making sure everything uh, was, was, was doing what it needed to do. If you are watching live, thank you so much. Um, for, for joining us. If you're not watching live, 
send us an send us an email or comment or or, or let us know what we can do. Uh, Elena, where can where can folks connect with you if if they want to be coach or if they want to uh, send their resume to your organization or or whatever? Yeah, LinkedIn is the best place. I'm on LinkedIn just as actively as I am on my email. It's my e- my name is E L E N A. My last name is R A I L E A N U. Pretty unique. <laughs> so that's why I didn't try to say it, to be honest. <laughs> if you search it, if you search it, you'll find me there. And awesome, BMC awesome. that I work for at this moment. Great. And Kartik, maybe you can just put that uh, in the comment section or something like that when, when we post this. Elena, I want to thank you so much for, for joining us today. Uh, if you're watching live or you're going to watch later, thank you so much for joining us and watching. Uh, this was Coaching Conversations. And have a wonderful afternoon. Elena, thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Chris and Kartik. Bye-bye.